Hello, I am Sarah Milliken and I am sitting in my kitchen uh, talking to my phone like you are all there. It's so weird. <laughs> I'm not very good at these things. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like you're all there, aren't you? You're the audience and I just can't hear you. Um, and I hope you're laughing. I hope you're smiling. I hope you're having a nice time uh, uh, when you're watching these. Uh, oh, that's what I mean. Uh, generally, life's weird, isn't it? Weird. So weird. I watched the adverts in a programme I'd recorded the other day just to kill a little bit more time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I hope you're all smiling. If you're not smiling, let's see if we can remedy that. That's what, that's what I'm for. I am the dedicated clown of the hour. Uh, we are currently on episode 1919. I can't believe we watched, we've watched. we done this many together. This is great. I mean, there's going to be a lot more because we're still only on page 53. It's shitloads to go. Don't worry, kids. For the people who are saying, why can't you do 45 pages <laughs> in every episode? Because then there would hardly be any episodes and we'd already be finished and bored at 3 p.m. every day. Who would we eat our biscuits with, if not Sarah Milliken? Um, so, oh, I just wanted to point out as well that I I am wearing a bra for all of these. You can't see, because they're lower than here. I mean, they're lower than the next level down as well, but I'll just give you a tiny flush. A bra, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> let me know, uh, women, let me know how often you're wearing a bra in the comments below, I'd like to know if I'm on target or if I really should be just taking it off after every single record <laughs> and just chucking it on the floor. So we are in episode 19 and we're in the middle, still in the middle of the chapter, Good Things That Happened at School. This is the one titled, I Was Crap at Heads. Hmm. In Mrs. Chilly's class in the first year at junior school, everything was taught through the medium of art. She was nice and creative and a little bit weird. She came in one day wearing sunglasses because she tried to breach it breach bleach her eyelashes and it had gone a bit wrong she once set us a task of making puppets for a puppet show the short kids were to be the puppeteers but everyone got a chance to make a papier mache how you'd say it in geordie paper mache puppet that might be chosen to be in the frog prince all the boys set about making the prince all the girls may included the princess Mrs. Chilly explained that heads aren't spherical, that the back juts out a little, and to bear that in mind. I did. I always did as I was told. She came across to see how I was doing. Saw my paper mache princess head, complete with jutting out back bit, and declared, Ah, you're doing the frog! So I painted my princess green with a heavy heart. But I was the only one who did a frog, so I totally got in the show. Ta -da. Uh, number 15, I got to pick a team. In PA, I was always the last to be picked. The PA teacher felt sorry for me, so she let me be the referee and gave me her whistle. But as I didn't know the rules of the game, I just stood on the sideline and blew the whistle whenever Mrs Chidley shouted, Now! There was one time when the teacher realised that some kids were always picked last, and she said, You, me, can pick a team. Now, I could have picked all the sporty kids and had an amazing team, plus me, that won. But no, I picked all the ones like me. All the glasses, wonky eyes and club feet. It was like the cantina scene in Star Wars and I was head alien. If this had been a Hollywood film, there'd have been a montage where the underdogs very quickly learned how to play netball and hammered it. But no, we got slaughtered. But we had such a brilliant time. For some of those kids, me included, it was the first time they'd held the netball when they weren't putting it in a cupboard. To be honest, I think that's why we lost. Because every time they had the ball, they kept taking it to the cupboard. <laughs> if the cupboard had been the goal, we would have won 8 nil. Number 16. I saw a girl squirt cheese in her mouth. Once on a school trip, we were told to take sandwiches. Whether my friend Gabrielle's parents were busy or lazy, I have no idea. But we were all jealous when she unpacked her lunch to reveal two slices of white bread and a, chew a full tube of primula cheese. I don't even like cheese. Which she proceeded to squirt directly into her mouth. I remember thinking, I bet this is what being an adult is like. Number 17. I was popular for the duration of a Kylie Minogue song. 
Another school trip was to Otterburn Hall, Northumberland's ultimate country house attraction, which was an odd choice for a school trip. There were, we were there four or five days. I had packed two spare outfits in case I fell in the man-made lake. I didn't see it once, let alone fall in twice. These days, kids would probably go to Disneyland Paris, Paris's ultimate theme park attraction. But we got Otterburn Hall, the sort of place I'd look at now in case they did big Sunday dinners, but wouldn't give a general shit about the antiques and history. Ooh, it looks like they do big Yorkshires. Forgive me in this bit if I often get this school trip and the one to Calais mixed up. Calais was barely French and a spider ran up a girl's leg. Otterburn was rope bridges and a disco. The disco was on the first night and we were urged to bring any mixtapes. If you don't know what a mixtape is, I have no time for you. We, we <laughs> urged to bring in any mixtapes we had so Mrs Chidley could, bring, could play them for everyone to dance to. Well, this was very exciting. I wondered if my mixtape would be a way to get more friends. The disco was well underway when a song came on that I knew was on my tape. Kylie's Got To Be Certain. Everyone was dancing. It's a cracking tune and I could see people chatting to each other about what a great song it was. Maybe even things like, we should find out whose tape this is and show her how to get her perm as crunchy as ours. That was something as I hadn't <laughs> that was something I hadn't figured out yet. Mine was all soft and natural like a nana's. Theirs was rock hard and never moved. Kylie's song ended abruptly and all at once my future popularity was hanging in the balance. As my future as a DJ was down the shitter, as my future as a DJ was down the shitter. Huh. In that moment, Mrs Chidley pulled a face, a sort of, what happened there, face. But the wondering didn't last long, as the loud metro radio jingle that denoted how I'd acquired the Seg Stock Aiken and Waterman Classic rang out across the neo-Elizabethan listed building. God knows what the people making the giant Yorkshire puddings must have thought. But while it was loud, it was also a short jingle and everyone's shoulders came back down, hopeful of another banging tune. This is where I realised my fatal flaw. Surely when Mrs Chidley asked us to hand in any mixtapes for the disco, what she really meant was, have a think about what's on that personal mixtape you've made just for yourself that no one has ever listened to. And if you think it will help you get friends who can crisp your curls, hand it in. Straight after the success of Kylie and the wobble of the radio jingle came Al Jarreau's theme from Moonlighting. Please stop reading to Google this. You can pause this and, and Google it and have a listen. It's best described as a ballad for mams. I loved the programme and loved the theme music. Why wouldn't I have it on my private mixtape? I had to spend another four days there talking about that loser with the crappy love song on her mixtape. Luckily, Mrs Chidley kept my secret safe. And that is the end of episode 19. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to let me know how often you're wearing a bra, women in the comments below. I'd be very grateful to know if I'm on target or not. Uh, I'm generally wearing them most days. Is that bad? But I'm not washing my hair hardly at all. So, you know, balance is out. Uh, have a good rest of day. Take care of yourselves. Uh, stay in the fucking house. Oh, there's too many fuckings now. Uh, wash your fucking hands. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Hello, it's Sarah Milliken here. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. Don't forget to like, pop a comment below and why not stick around to watch a few more. I'm sure those emails or those dishes can wait a bit longer.